What's up, family? Welcome to another Sabbath School devotional. Let us start with a word of prayer. Lord Jesus, we thank you for all you've done for us. Thank you for giving us another opportunity to come to your throne, to uh, worship you in spirit and in truth. Help us um, understand you to a deeper understanding as we spend time in you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Welcome. And today we will go over part two of the covenants. But before we dive into that part, let's do a quick recap of yesterday's lesson, which was part one of the covenants. In that part, we spoke of the first thing that Noah did when he got out of the ark. Noah built an altar and sacrificed animals as a Thanksgiving sacrifice. The second part of yesterday's lesson was the change in human being diets after the flood. For the first time in the history of the world, we see that man was told to eat meat. And again, not just any kind of meat, but only the clean kind of meat. That was yesterday in a nutshell. So today, let's dive into part two of the covenant. Let's start with this question. What is the significance of God's commitment to the preservation of life? As you can hear, there's life all around me. These birds are really loud. Uh, but I wanted to shoot this video out here so that we could get a sense of, I guess, nature and part of, I guess, the noise that, ha that was going on in the ark. So uh, hopefully the noise doesn't overpower me talking so i'm going to try to speak a little louder but uh i do feel that hearing nature does and will help us understand this a little bit better so um let's read genesis 8 verse 21 and 22 to answer the question which was what is the significance of god's commitment to the preservation of life and it says and the Lord smelt a soothing aroma. Then the Lord said in his heart, I will never again curse the ground for man's sake. Although the imagination of man's heart is evil from his youth, nor will I again destroy every living thing as I have done. Verse 22. While the earth is remain, seed time and harvest, colds and heat, winter and summer, and day and night shall not cease. Here we see that God's commitments to preserve life was an act of grace. It was not a result of human merit. God decided to preserve life on earth in spite of human evil. I like the way the DRA version says it in Genesis 8, verse 22. It reads literally all the days of the earth. That is, for as long as this present earth remains, the seasons will come and go and life will be sustained. In short, God has not given up on his creation, no matter how evil we are, like he mentioned here from the youth, he is not giving up on us. The Lord, in a sense, is giving humanity a chance to start over, fresh. One of the most known symbols associated with the flood is the rainbow. What is the significance of the rainbow? We can find that answer in Genesis 9, 13 to 17. And it reads, I have set my bow in the clouds, and it shall be a sign of the covenant between me and the earth. When I bring clouds over the earth and the bow is seen in the clouds, I will remember my covenant that is between me and you and every living creature's in all flesh and the waters shall never again become a flood to destroy all flesh when the bow is in the cloud 
I will see it and remember the everlasting covenant between God and every living thing, every creatures and all flesh that is on the earth. God said to Noah, this is the sign of the covenant that I have established between me and all flesh that is on the earth. So what is the significance of the rainbow? The rainbow signifies the covenants that God promised to never destroy the earth with flood waters ever again. Something else we can find here in this text is that there is a parallel between the covenants and the Sabbath, which is also a covenant. The rainbow has a universal scope and so does the Sabbath. They both apply to the entire world. When God put the, the rainbow in the sky, the covenant was to never destroy the world ever again. And the covenant of the Sabbath is for all men also. So next time you see a rainbow, think about all of God's promise. Not just the promise that he will never destroy the world by water, but the promise is that he will never leave us and that he loves us so dearly. So brothers and sisters, I encourage you to spend time in the word so that you get to understand our great God deeper and trust him more and believe that he will always keep his promises. Be blessed and thank you for spending time with me this week. And I hope you enjoyed me as much as I enjoyed doing this for you guys. Be blessed.